So this is a video I was hoping I wouldn't have to make for a while, but uh, here we are. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. As you can see behind me, Fusion's not looking so hot. But uh, before getting into anything, just know Yvette and I are completely fine, nothing really to report there. So it's gonna be more focused on the car, what happened, what's damaged, and where we go from here. So as you guys know, I drive to and from Austin a lot, usually taking Highway 35 as that's the most direct route. Now, I was going with Yvette on a Sunday and we had gassed up at a Love's in Italy, Texas. Then getting back on the highway, we found ourselves behind a vehicle pulling a trailer. Now the highway was pretty open ahead, but there was a vehicle near my blind spot. Now the vehicle that was pulling a trailer had some sort of cover that was coming loose and ended up actually falling off of the trailer onto the road. Now, seeing this, my immediate reaction was slow down and move over to the left lane, basically getting out of the way. That vehicle that was to my left, I believe it was a white SUV, started slowing down as well, really closing that door and not letting me get over to the left lane unless I was gonna you know, gun it, which I love this car, but she doesn't have that kind of power. And noticing that this piece of debris is more on the right side of the lane, not really the most viable option to go to the shoulder, being that the speed limit here is 75, and I was slowing down, granted, but it's a very small window. More than likely, you're gonna have to swerve and not really the safest route. So with Yvette and I's safety paramount, basic course of action is really just, you know, go through it and let the car take the grunts of the hit, which she did, and uh, from there, obviously, took some damage, but that was basically it. Now, all things considered, felt a lot more dramatic than it was. So we pulled over to assess the damage. The lower half of the bumper is what took the majority of the damage. My fog light was basically floating at this point, so my two cents are secure what is loose on the vehicle and go back for the piece of debris as well as my lower half of the bumper. So as I'm down there just removing these pieces entirely, a really nice guy comes up and asks if we're okay, to which we say yeah, and if there's anything he can do to help. I tell him we're all good, that I'm just securing these pieces so I can go back and grab the pieces of debris. And uh, he offers to do it while I'm securing it down and he goes to pick them up. A couple minutes later, he comes back and uh, shows me the 3D carbon lip is basically all damaged and he identifies uh, whatever it was as some sort of 18-wheeler cover. Now, I didn't catch his name, but he was a really nice guy and being able to secure the road for the pieces of debris, both from the trailer that dropped it as well as what ended up getting hit on my vehicle was really nice because that made it to where nobody else was involved in this situation. And I'm gonna give the driver of the vehicle with the trailer a little bit of the benefit of the doubt and just say it was negligence or some level of that and that he just didn't know that the piece was not secured down and that he didn't know that it actually fell off of his vehicle. Though it does look a little bit like he slowed down and then just kind of, yeah. However, it is pretty annoying that the vehicle to my left ended up moving over after I had already taken the damage and um, had they done that sooner, would have just been able to just avoid it pretty casually. But all things considered, definitely not the worst case scenario. Now the silver lining to this whole thing, aside from Yvette and I being okay, obviously, is that it's all just cosmetic damage for the vehicle. So here is what we're dealing with in terms of what needs to be fixed. It's really just the bumper and the fog lights. Thankfully, the grill was unharmed. I mean, it still needs a cleanup, granted, but uh, you can see it just kind of popped out of place. Uh, I'm still rocking the old headlights at the time of filming this, so, you know, that's not really a big deal because I'm going to be replacing them anyway and these weren't even damaged. The bumper has a little corner piece, whatever you really want to call it, that goes down here. As you can see, just ripped clean off, so there's that. Then, of course, the fog lights. Now, this fog light looks okay. It looks like it was just kind of popped back a little bit, just being out of place. And this one looks okay for the most part as well, but I don't think it can be mounted again because the bumper took the damage mainly right here. And this one is the one I had to take off just because it was pretty much just kind of hanging in there at this point. Now, the piece that is a complete loss at this point is the 3d carbon lip as you can see right here it's kind of got torn up right there and uh same thing on this side now this does specifically suck because this was one of my top two favorite pieces on the car and um it was a gift for me that i thought it looked really cool and it definitely had a lot of functionality with it as well but i mean the good thing this part is still in production you can go to cd3 performance or 3d carbon specifically just be like hey can you make me one? Because they are made to order. Um, but, you know, it is a front lip, splitter, whatever you really want to call it. And uh, these pieces get blown up left and right. So um, the fact that I had this one this long, I think is still pretty cool and just kind of a testament to how durable it is. But now let me give you guys the rundown for what's next. So I'll admit, this stung pretty early on. But that was before I found out that you could buy a bumper from Ford for about $130, which is a pretty good deal. Granted, you have to say that you have the parking sensors and a little section for the tow hook. But comparatively, 
the bumper replacement for this one that has no parking sensors, no tow hook cutout, whatever it is, uh, is $650. And if I'm saving 500 bucks, also I have parking sensors left and right. Plus the direct replacement for this bumper is also on back order. And with a new bumper, I have three main thoughts. Firstly, I won't have the little dealer cutout where they just drill holes in for the license plate. It's pretty annoying. I definitely like the cleaner, smooth look. And, uh, you know, I definitely think that if the manufacturer wanted you to have a license plate there specifically, they would have just put the holes in there themselves. The fact that they don't says that they don't want you to. And uh, basically just buy a bracket and put it in position there. Make it look a lot better. So that's one. And then two, I am going to see about possibly getting the little indentation right here for the Ford emblem smoothed over. I think it'll look better. Just, you know, nice clean lines. I don't really know if there's like a proper process to it or if you just slap some body filler in there, which I'm cool with. Um, but then the last thing is I don't have to get it painted. I can just get it wrapped, which is honestly where a lot of the money for, you know, fixing vehicles comes from and just the paint because specifically a paint like this vehicle, you would need to blend it being that it's a pearl. But I can just wrap this because the vehicle's wrapped or rather get Leo to wrap it because he's a lot better at it than I am. But yeah, not the most ideal situation, but definitely not the worst situation. Now for the fog lights. Full transparency i was already looking at replacing these pieces because these are in this matte black but they're also faded and these are one of the really only original pieces of the front end of the vehicle basically everything else has been addressed so i knew it was time to do something about it i wanted to get the mondeo st spec or i don't really know what the specs for it are but the one that has like the little spears that those look cool and um, with that these fog lights themselves were probably one of the first mods done on this car and um you know, they, they, they've been good. They haven't really had much use because I'm not really the type of guy that uses fog lights like that. But I did see Diode Dynamics has a fog light bulb that also has RGB functions. So for the headlights that we're going to be doing here in a sec, I definitely think it would pair really well. So that's kind of the goal that I'm going for is having RGB capable fog lights with a nice new housing. So I'm really just looking at it as trying to account for upgrades because honestly, the bumper was one of the areas that I wasn't necessarily sold on only because it wasn't in the best condition, um, you know, previous owner and it was in an accident way back when so just being able to account for that i think is going to give the vehicle a much more put together feel i really don't know how to describe it but yeah just kind of things that i wanted to account for anyway so this is definitely the nudge to actually take care of them so yeah definitely not the worst case scenario i do want to give props to the fusion for taking care of us because though it wasn't the biggest obstacle on the road i've seen vehicles be taken out with a lot less and you know she's still pulling strong uh, so we're probably going to start off with the headlights, being that you don't need the bumper for that anyways. And we're going to be redoing a good bit of the bumper as a whole. So we're going to get to it, but that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next one.